Hi, this is Freya with another edition of Musicianship for Singers. Today we're going to talk about the tonic, the subdominant, and the dominant. If you've asked yourself what creatures these are, please stay tuned. I used to not understand what that is when I was in school, like in in middle school, I didn't understand what's the tonic and what's the relevance. Now the tonic, if you're in any given key, for example, C major, see there's the chord C major that consists of C, E, G. And then of course we have C again on the top. That is a major chord, just a regular, very plain major chord. That note that is on the bottom that that chord is built on is C. That's why it's called C in C major. Now, in the key of C major, there is not just the chord of C, because you can't just sing on one chord all the time. I can sing here, but that doesn't make up a song yet. If I stayed always on this chord, what would I sing? I have to use another chord. Ah, there I can use another chord. That chord is the dominant, and then I can go back to this chord, yeah. See, that is the tonic, it's built, you can already hear that that is kind of the root of the whole key signature. There is the tone, and this is the tonic, the tonic, the tonic chord. And then I can go to the dominant, to the dominant, to the dominant. Dominant, it's called dominant because it is dominant. It dominates because it's very strong. It's a very strong one. And of course, below the dominant, just one whole pitch below the dominant is the subdominant. This is the subdominant because it's below the dominant. And then you go back to the dominant, which is in this case G major. And then you could go to a dominant seven. There's the seven. Let me explain to you what that means. Back to the tonic. See, the tonic is that it usually ends, pretty much almost all songs end on the tonic or begin on the tonic. Not all of them. Sometimes you end on something else, like a minor chord, but I'm not gonna get into that today. I wanna just talk about tonic. And then you go to the dominant, and G is the root of that. And below that is the subdominant, which is F in this case. Then you go back to the dominant, or dominant seven, to the tonic. Okay, so if anybody Next time somebody mentions the tonic or the dominant or a dominant seven, you know what that sounds like. For me, it was always important what it sounds like. Then I totally get it. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you're going to be back next week for another edition of Musicianship for Singers because I do think it is important that singers also know about the theory behind, the theory behind all the music. And in the meantime, if you want me to help you, you can jump on my Thursday live stream. Get on here, 5 p.m. Central European time. Just you can Google what time that is in your time zone. You can ask me questions. And if you want to ask me more personally, you can jump on our monthly group coaching session, which I'm offering on a monthly basis. Once a month, there's very limited space available because I want to answer everybody's question. It's a video call and you can actually talk to me face to face and I can see you and I can hear you, which makes it a lot easier for me to figure out what the problem may be with your issues. Thanks, guys. I would love to meet you personally. And until next time, don't forget, always keep a song in your heart and always keep on singing. Bye now.